My name is Marty Bacher. Will you bring that monitor down for me a little bit? Thank you very much. Um, my name is Marty Bacher. I am, among other things, the minister here, and it's my privilege to welcome you to our service this morning. I want to warn you right now, I took some time off. I got really inspired. I've now had rest. So if you found me obnoxious before, <laughs> just warning you. So uh, here we go. But we are blessed that you're here today. I'm excited to welcome you into the community. We're here very simply to, to love and to grow and to serve, to create a deep and abiding relationship with the divine that allows us to experience the fullness of who we are. And so we come together in spiritual community, not because we couldn't learn all these things on our own, but because we find value in being together, value in being around like-minded souls value in having people that see the best in you and not the worst in you. You probably already have enough of those. So we're grateful you're here. We're grateful to be here together. If you are joining us for the first time today, we just want to welcome you. We want to invite you to relax and enjoy yourself. There will be no big clothes. We do want to make sure that you did get a packet of information about us and we'd like to find out more about you. And so 
We also want to invite you to join us for coffee after the service. Having said that, let's begin the inward journey, shall we? And I just invite you to begin by taking a few deep breaths, breathing in gratitude, and releasing anything unlike it. Another deep breath of joy, and releasing anything unlike it. Another deep breath of peace, and releasing anything unlike it. And as we come together this morning, it is with a full heart and an open mind to be open and receptive to the truth of who we are, to remember that we are divine beings. And so we connect with that which is within us that is seeking to be expressed more fully, more joyously, more lovingly. I believe we are brought together by divine appointment. And so I'm simply sending the intention that something happens this day that opens our heart even further to that presence of unconditional love, our minds to divine wisdom, our souls to the remembrance of our origin. And I am so grateful. I am grateful for this time, for this place, for this community. I give thanks for the many hands and hearts that come together to provide this service this building, this community. Truly, it takes a village, and we are so grateful for everyone who contributes to this mission, to this purpose. And so I know today begins a new day. All creation moves forward. And so we allow that which has been in our hearts that which is in our mind to be more fully revealed. The Master said, you shall know the truth and it shall set you free and so we allow truth to be known. For all of these blessings and so many more, I am giving thanks. I am releasing it into that power of the living Christ to go forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper. As together we say, And so it is. Amen. A friend shared this with me. um, And it's just too good. So I had to share it with you. And since we have a number of ministers in the room, in the house, see if you can relate. And I know we have some 12-step people in the group, so you may be able to relate to this as well. So a friend wrote this um, message to fellow ministers, and he said, uh, his name is Reverend Ralph Ellis. He says, I once again find myself in a cycle of what you, my colleagues, are telling me is quite normal, navigating the multiplicity of opinions, personalities, power plays, and behaviors of spiritual community. It occurred to me that it might be helpful to apply the 12 steps that have guided me to live free for the past 36 years. So this evening, I adapted them to ministry, and these are expressed with light-hearted sincerity, which is a wonderful way to approach life, I think. One, we admitted we were powerless over community dynamics, that our ministry had become unmanageable. (laughs) Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Made a decision to turn our will, our community, and our opinions over to the care of God as we understood it, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of our unrelenting efforts to make community follow our vision of it, (laughs) admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another minister the exact nature of our inexhaustible efforts to control our spiritual community. We're entirely ready to reveal and neutralize all of the hidden beliefs that distorted our character humbly prayed for a realization of the divine as our ministry, made a list of persons we had pissed off, disappointed (laughs) or ignored, and become willing to go back and listen patiently and lovingly to all of them, included the ideas and expressions of such such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others, continued to take personal inventory, and when we missed the mark, promptly admitted it sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood it, 
praying only for the knowledge of its will as us and the courage to carry that out. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to ministers and to practice these principles in all of our ministerial interactions. So I realize I've got some work to do. <laughs> I was good right up until opinions, and then I was like, hmm. <laughs> so from Christian Larson, he writes, promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind, to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet, to make all your friends feel that there is something in them, to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true. Promise yourself to think only the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. To forget the mistakes of the past and to press on to the greater achievements of the future. To wear a cheerful countenance at all times and give every living creature you meet a smile. Promise yourself to give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. To think well of yourself and to proclaim this fact to the world not in loud words, but in great deeds. To live in faith that the whole world is on your side so long as you are true to the best that is in you. And so let us make that promise to ourselves. To continue to love, to grow, to serve. To expand our consciousness until we realize at the deepest possible level that we are divine beings living fully, expressing the truth of who we are. We are invited to let our light shine brightly. And so we promise ourselves so today. And so it is. Amen. We are delighted, as always, to welcome <coughs> A very important part of our community, Ms. Kay Simpkins. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. That's good. I am delighted to be home at Unity today. I am saying I love everybody this morning, and I hope you love me back. All right. <laughs> and I just um, wanted to share a meditation because we are focusing on our intentions this month and since we are getting closer to the end of the month um, we're going to do our I am meditation it's a lovely song I am the light of my soul but in this meditation we are uh, not only inviting our I am presence but we're opening up today so that's the goal so that as Reverend Marty ministers and speaks to us that we can hear what the divine is saying. So I'm just going to ask you, as I sing this song, you're welcome to open your eyes, close your eyes. If you know madras and whatever you choose to do with your hands, I welcome you to do that because we're going into meditation. We want to go a little deeper this morning. All right. Bless you. Breathe in, breathe out. I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful.
bountiful I am, bountiful I am, bliss. I am, I am. Let's go up a little higher. I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. Let's go up a little higher. I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful. I am bliss. I. Am Go up into our Christ consciousness. I am the light of my soul. I'm beautiful. I am bountiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. Hmm, let's go into Om. We can go into your own. Open up, let's go a little higher. I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. See yourself elevating. I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful. Elevate higher, higher. I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. Let's go into your I am. 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 I am, 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 breathe in, breathe out. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the divine. <sighs> Wonderful. I am the light of my soul. Namaste. Bless you. So Would it be okay if I was authentic and vulnerable with you today? <laughs> I told you the truth as it really is and not the truth that you want to hear. Uh, all right. So we are here as divine beings. Ever heard that? Ever believed it? Ever believed it at the core of your soul? <laughs> yes, that's the work. I mean, intellectually, of course. And yet, what I find is sometimes I see obstacles in my life, and I think the obstacles are bigger than me or bigger than my God. And when I do that, I often find myself trying to solve problems at the level of the problem, and guess what? It don't work. It doesn't work. So... It, Emerson said to us, great are they that cease that the spiritual is stronger than any material force, that thoughts 
rule the world. That thoughts rule the world. So if that's the case, it might make sense to pay attention to our thoughts. So I've been immersed in a couple of different programs. By the way, I'm just going to make it public. I'm in a 16-week body challenge. I'm already, yes, I know. So I want to give you some warning. So when I show up in my hotness in 16 weeks, you're not like, oh, my God. I can't even listen to what he's saying because I'm like, look. So we can gradually move into this and, uh, you know, I just like to prep you, you know. And I say it publicly because I know there's a, something that happens when we make ourselves accountable. So not only when do we talk to ourselves, we also lie to ourselves on a very regular basis. Have you noticed that? Get up with the best of intentions in the morning, and before the day is through, we may not have fulfilled said intentions. But when we have another person that we're accountable to, whether it's right or wrong, we tend to be more likely to fulfill our commitment. One, we've set it outside of ourselves, so now it exists, and now somebody else knows, and if we really give them permission to hold us accountable to what we said, see, that's what good friends will help you do. Then, there's power. We began a series of intention groups this week, and it's cool. Right? Isn't it? For those of you in, cool? Yeah. And we'll be doing more, and that's kind of the the program we're going to do this fall in our connect groups is following an intention group. An intention group looks like not only setting an intention for ourselves as well as following it with action. So what are we talking about when we're talking about intention? You see, we are co-creative beings with the divine. We have a power that is universal. You see, the universe wants to reveal itself. It wants to express itself. It wants to make itself known into form. And so we are co-creative beings with that power. So I always talk about co-creation. Really, of ourselves, we create nothing. But the universe, God, spirit, whatever you choose to call that presence, is creative, and we can direct that creativity through the power of our thought. More importantly, through the power of our belief. And so it becomes incumbent upon us to pay attention to what we are thinking, what we are believing, what we are saying, and those things then to lead to how we act. Right? So I'm going to do a little teaching today. Now, many of you know I come out of a science of mind background. Ned, you'll be happy. You're going to be so happy. You're going to, because you've never heard this before. (laughs) So science of mind. Unity has the same thing, but it's a little less clear. And so I just want to work with it. In science of mind. Oops. That's not what I want. Which is the one that's, oh, there. See, I, want, I love this. My cat was here, she'd be cra- he'd be crazy right now. So in this uh, science of mind model, which is the same thing Unity teaches, only we teach it a little differently, it talks about the three aspects of the divine. And the creative process is there's a spiritual dimension. There is the source of all that is. In the Bible it says, in the beginning, there was nothing. And God said, let there be light. And what the heck do you think happened? There was an effect called light. You see, this is a creative process. It's not something that happened 6,000 years ago. Some of your friends might tell you. Um, It's an ongoing process. And so spirit is the idea, the creativity, the divine expressing. We then, and it moves through, so there's some aspect we often call the soul or the law you like to use, that is, takes that idea, takes that creative essence, and brings it into form, brings it into effect. Isn't that cool? So God said, let there be light. There was light, and it was like, that was cool. I think I'll create planets and people and little critters and all kinds of stuff, because I'm having this creative process. 
The ongoing process is going on. And so when we begin to understand this, we begin to understand that creativity takes place in mind, in the spirit. I was checking in this week. We often use the example. So in a, in a, in a personal level, this top quadrant would be our conscious mind, the mind that thinks, the mind that chooses. So we each chose to be here this morning, and congratulations, you're here. If you meant to be someplace else, you got work to do, but it's all right. It's a good start. <laughs> Right? So the mind can choose. And then we have a subconscious mind which stores all of that wonderful information. Isn't that beautiful? That as we're learning, we store that information so we don't have to learn everything every day. We don't have to start from scratch. We already have master. We have mastery at putting on and tying our shoes. We have mastery at doing all of the things. We know how to drive. We don't think about it anymore. We just do it because this lovely and wonderful subconscious mind has stored information. Now, what we also know is that when we store information in our subconscious mind, we store beliefs. My version of this has in this area a little symbol that I put in there called BS, which for all of you that have studied with me know that means belief system. I don't know what the rest of you are thinking, but, you know, those of us that are enlightened went right to the highest possibility. And, um, right, because we have stored beliefs. We may have grown up with parents that said money is fun and easy and comes to us easily and effortlessly, and we always have more than enough to share and to grow and to experience the fullness of life. And we took that on, and no matter what we do, we always seem to have enough money. Or not. <laughs> Some of us got a different version about scarcity and not enoughness, not worthy enough. And so we absorb beliefs. But here's what I want you to hear. I want you to hear this. You gave me permission to tell you the hard truth, right? Still with me? <laughs> you agreed to it. At some level, not knowing any better, you agreed to it. You said, aha, uh -huh. That's the way it is. And we made a decision, whether it was at a two-year-old or whatever, that said, that's the way it is, and lived accordingly. And so, because the law works upon our subconscious belief, it produces experiences for us that support us completely in being right. I used to affirm that I am broke and the universe would support me in my brokenness. <laughs> Not because the universe ran out of money, but because I lived from a belief, I got to experience the effect of that belief, and then, oh my gosh, it was so good, so good. I got to be right. I had data. Now it wasn't a belief, it was data. It was evidence. And I got to be a victim. <laughs> Not my fault. It's the blah, blah, blah. Economy. Ha, 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 ha. So when I came up with this model, when I started this work, I was like, oh, look at that. Because I love, there's a passage in the Bible that says, God makes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. In other words, the universal laws are just universal laws. God's not playing favor. It's not rewarding some and punishing others. God's not, you know, uh, choosing one football team over another, although I know we like to pray that way sometimes. Um, <laughs> right? The divine is fulfilling itself through our intention, through our belief. And so if the effect that we're experiencing is not what we want, then we need to practice responsibility. The great thing, and this is a person that has some serious experience in victimhood, just want you to know. Victimhood and martyrdom. <sighs> Again, mastery, thank you. Um, so, you know, I know from which I speak. 
<laughs> so when we choose to be at the effect of the world, it may feel good, but it changes nothing. So taking responsibility, and hear me when I say this, radical responsibility is not blame and shame and guilt and all that. Even in New Thought, sometimes we go, I would say we like to trade in our old version of guilt for a new, improved version of guilt. <laughs> Instead of blaming God or the devil, we blame ourselves. But blame is not what we're going for. It's that idea that at some level, if I was a three-year-old child and I made a decision as a three-year-old child... I made mine at about 10. Looking at my dad, gone all the time, doing his thing, doing what he knew to do to be a good dad. But my interpretation of those events was if that's what it takes to be successful, hear me, I will never be successful. Now, take an idea, combine it with emotion, plant it in your subconscious, and it still lives there 10, 20 years later, when every time you're about to achieve a level of success, the mind that's not conscious is saying, oh, you're about to be successful. Do, don't do successful stuff. Remember, because when you were 10, you made a stupid decision. You're still living with it. You haven't re-examined. Right? And I began to see that. So I healed the belief. You see, we will never solve the problems at the level of the effect. We will never solve our money problems by getting more money unless it corresponds with an inner shift. We won't solve our health problems with a health program unless it's accompanied by an inner shift. You see, all of the problems, that's why I always quote Einstein when he said, we don't solve the problem at the level of thinking that created the problem in the first place. I, because I'm stubborn, like to sometimes like try, what, what if I did it harder? You know, what if I ran at that wall harder? And God says, you could use the door, but, you know, go for it. <laughs> right? So when we start to realize this, then it becomes a journey. And as best I can, I've only been doing this for about 35 years, so as best I can tell, I'm way better than I was, but I don't think I'm done. In fact, I keep being reminded that I'm not done. But something's happening. And so when we are working or even playing at being a godlike being, I remember when I was in practitioner training saying, I'm really working at having more fun in my life. I'm really working at playing more. Now, you would never know I was a workaholic from any of the statements that I made, but you realize when you have to work at play, Right? <laughs> Not quite, you know, right? If we just listen to ourselves, we learn all kinds of things, right? So when we start to hear those thoughts of what we're not wanting to create in the universe, just love ourselves and realize we want to just reaffirm what we want. What we want. Then we begin to trust the universe. Because there is that within us that knows how to reveal itself. In this creative process, we often talk about if we were to plant a seed, the spirit, the idea, into the soil or the soul or the law, we would have an effect similar to. So I wanted to, I wanted to confirm this because I, I haven't been everywhere. I've never been to Hawaii. And my friend Gloria is moving back to Hawaii. So I wanted to check with her. And I said, so I just want to know, if you plant a carrot seed in Hawaii, what kind of plant do you get? And it turns out, even in Hawaii, you get a carrot. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Sometimes people will come to us and they'll say, I don't understand why all of this stuff is going on in my life. Loving me <laughs> says, let's look at what we're planting. Jesus said to us, you will reap what you sow. We are sowing seeds all day long. Thought after thought after thought. You go, I know, I'll go to Unity of Charlotte because we spend exactly 30 seconds doing an affirmation. 
And then I can go back to my stinking thinking. <laughs> well, <laughs> still going to allow to get a stink if you do a lot of stinking thinking. You know, it's just uh, it's not personal. It's just what is. So this power, and we're really working. I'm loving this intention group, and I'm loving where we're going. We're going to really move into another level because part of what we're learning is there's setting an intention, which is who do I want to become? Who do I want to become? In other words, what quality of spirits, which I already possess, do I want to express more? You see, you already have the entire abundance of the universe as part of who you are. And yet, at an effect level, you may not be experiencing that. You already have the wholeness of spirit. But through our own process, we may not be revealing that. So the joy of being together in spiritual community is we get to support each other in bringing forth more of that, releasing those beliefs that no longer serve us and replacing them with the beliefs that allow us to experience the fullness of who we are. How good is that? It's fabulous, in case you were wondering. So, so I was in this amazing, amazing personal growth experience last weekend and <laughs> I was grateful because I've got like sermons for the next year. Um, one gal, her name is Keshi, Keshi Okachi, who was in a car, I mean in a plane wreck, 2005, 107 people, two survived, she was one of them. Massive burns across her body. So when she comes out, much like Kay with this beautiful voice, scars all over her body, thank God she survived, she lived, sang, what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, Kelly Clarkson's song, you know, that took one second before I was just boohooing all over. <laughs> and then, I mean, she was amazing. And then they had this little interview with her, and they s just saying, "What was your journey?" She was on uh, one of American Idol or one of those things. Uh, America's Got Talent. Yeah, you can Google it, right? Apparently, um, but they're saying, you know, how did you get here? Because this was not a like little thing. This was life threatening, but she made it. And she said this, I refused to let my scars define me. <laughs> so I had a little slap myself upside the head moment of like, okay, Marty, right? Do we let our scars define us? Do we let our mistakes Sometimes we don't want to share our journey with others because we're embarrassed about the mistakes that we made. And yet when we think about it, those are the things, if we survived it, they made us stronger. Part of why I do what I do is because I didn't do <laughs> this first and that approach didn't work. I had to find a new way to show up in the world. So, amazing weekend. It's Nashville. Met a great friend. I have a new bestie who's wonderful. He's from India originally. He's been living here for, you know, 30 years or something. And just, you know, so amazing. So we had this great conversation and all this, you know, kind of in this workshop. So then we had processing time and all this sort of thing. And so we went to the airport to come home. This was, what, Tuesday night? Because we were starting our groups on Wednesday. 7 o'clock flight supposed to go, flying back to Charlotte, get here at 8, get a good night's sleep, be rested and refreshed to give my spiritual charms to the world. <laughs> and then they delayed the flight. No big deal. He says, we want to go have a beer. Let's go have a beer. So we're processing. Oh, my God. What are you going to believe now? You know, really into this thing. And so... Um, it turns out that this agreement that I made with the airlines a long time ago still holds. <laughs> and that agreement is if I'm not on the plane when it leaves, they leave without me. <laughs> Do you have the same agreement? Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to go to the little counter and say, ma'am, don't you know who I think I am? <laughs> right? 
but they left. We were so engaged, we weren't paying attention. Now, the other lesson, and I'm probably going to stop. I might not stop. I might just keep going, but I will. <laughs> Another speaker talking about radical responsibility and saying, ask yourself, what is the fully accountable version of that story? Now, see, there's a part of me, because some of that victim-y, martyr -y person still lives within me, that wanted to somehow make it about the airlines because I didn't get the text. I could have made it about my friend because he was supposed to be watching the clock. <laughs> Somebody needs to be responsible, gosh. <laughs> right? And so it turns out, all of a sudden, he goes out, comes back, and goes, <laughs> these big eyes. Um, uh, we kind of missed our flight. <laughs> no problem. So we go back to this lovely lady at the counter. She says, there's no flights out until tomorrow night. But if you leave in the next 15 minutes, you can go to Philadelphia. Yay. <laughs> You'll get there at midnight. We've got a flight you can get on at 4.30 in the morning, and you can fly out at 5. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Right? So, so this, is, this is my point, is how do we look at that? You see, when we set an intention, I was going to be in class. Turned out the universe gave me a really easy option, but I didn't take that one. So it gave me a second option. <laughs> Philadelphia Airport's quiet, 2 o'clock in the morning, it turns out. You know, lovely place. So, right, but I got here. So the universe will always provide. So sometimes the goal must shift a little bit, but the intention doesn't change. So we got here, we had a great class, I took a couple of naps, and now we're back. But I love that idea. What's the fully accountable story? Wasn't about the airline. Wasn't about the text. Wasn't about my friend. It was about me not paying attention. Being more engaged in this fabulous conversation, which was fabulous, so we got to have a couple more fabulous conversations because we had a whole night, you know, right? <laughs> you see, our power is if we're willing to be fully accountable, fully responsible for our lives. Not to blame, but to just look at what have I done to create, to promote, to allow this experience. Because it turns out, now I keep thinking there's going to be another version of this if I keep with it, where it gets to be about somebody else changing their consciousness, but so far... The lesson I keep getting, if I want to heal, I need to heal myself. And then attract and draw into my experience those situations, people, places, things that resonate with who I am. Hmm. Makes you think we might want to do some work. <clears throat> Two questions I'll end with. Always two questions. Who do I want to become? You see, often we want to work at the doing level. What should I do right now? Who do I need to become? If I want to be a millionaire, how would a millionaire think about this situation? If I want to be healthy, how would a healthy person approach this situation? You see, sometimes we live in the illusion that if the situation would just go away, we would have this healing. And the situation is saying, I'm here to point out for you, very in clear terms, what is unhealed. Because the universe loves you that much. So the first question we ask ourselves is, who do I want to become? And then we ask ourselves, what must I do? You see, because intention must be followed by action. It must take that high thought and bring it into the world. And you may miss a flight or two. You may have situations that you don't understand showing up and you're like, well, I was intending to have more money and now my car just broke down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who are you now? <laughs> How high-minded are you right now? Right? 
The universe loves us so much. It just keeps providing opportunities for our healing, for our growth, for our understanding. Whether we like it or not. <laughs> Enough with the growth, health, and growth, and healing, and understanding. But who do I want to become? What do I want to do? What is my intention? And how will I follow that intention with action? So I set an intention. I signed up for this 16-week challenge. I put it on Facebook. So only 1,500 of my closest friends even know about it. <laughs> yes, because I know I will be more accountable to that. First thing I did, I quit my gym. But you were going to go to the gym. Yes, I don't like this gym. It's one of the reasons I don't go. Now, well, I'm going to go over. The other piece I'm worried on is money management idea. And so I quit one thing before I started a new thing. Huh. A first. <laughs> Ever found yourself with three gym memberships and you never go to any of them? I know that guy. <laughs> Ever signed up for a program, but you haven't finished the last pro right? It's an amazing thing. Anyways, I digress. I told you I was going to get obnoxious, and so here we are. The universe loves us so much. And if we're willing to practice radical responsibility, and we're willing to not let our scars define us, we can allow the divine to reveal itself more fully, more completely, every day of our lives. Jesus taught us if you would seek first this spiritual dimension, all of these things shall be added unto you. Let us pray. So we just anchor into that awareness. I'd invite you, if you're willing, to just place your hand over your heart as I speak these words. Feel the heart pumping and the blood coursing through our body. There's an intelligence that causes all of that to happen. It doesn't need our opinion. It doesn't need our help. The heart beats. But um, but um, but um. The blood courses. The lungs breathe. The planets remain in perfect balance and motion. Rain falls, flower grows, life continues on, and that life is our life. So as we open ourselves right here and right now to the willingness to release those ideas that no longer serve us, to surrender those beliefs, those limiting beliefs, to the empowering belief of who we are, as we speak a new word of truth, we proclaim and declare for ourselves abundance, joy, love, harmony, wholeness, health, well-being, all good is already provided. And so we joyously participate in the divine flow of giving and receiving, breathing in, breathing out, allowing life to work for us as we work for life. That dream that is in your heart, that intention that you have set, has all that is necessary for its complete fulfillment, just as the seed has the intelligence and the prototype for its fulfillment. So we cultivate the soil. We stay with it until the plant has revealed itself according to its own kind. How good it is to know this truth and how blessed we are to know it. We are indeed blessed, and so we bless each other. We bless ourselves. We give thanks for all of the good. We extend that blessing to all people everywhere, seeing a planet at peace and a world that works for all. We bless all priests, rabbis, ministers, teachers of all faiths, for we know there are many pathways. We name them good. And so I invite you to take a deep breath knowing that this is the truth of who you are. Divine expressions of this one life. All that is needed is already provided. 
wisdom, clarity, guidance, courage. And so in joy and gratitude, we give thanks for these many blessings. Giving thanks for this law of mind that is operating upon the consciousness that we have established here. Releasing this word into that law, knowing that through the power of the living Christ, it goes forth to a blessing of all. Together we say, and so it is. Amen. Have the faith. You can turn it down just a little. That sees the invisible. Expects the incredible. Receives the impossible. Faith. Music up. That can conquer. Anything I have the faith to uproot my problem. Oh, faith to know my God will solve them. Oh, faith to envision. can conquer anything oh faith that reach the unreachable faith to fight the unbeatable faith to remove the unmovable faith to withstand the invincible
Okay, Simpkins bringing it on home. Yes. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like something magnificent is happening. And so I'm going to invite you to repeat after me, as we like to call this, our affirmicize. These are lovely words. Know them. But listen to me and repeat after me. Something magnificent is happening through me right now. Right it is happening through my mind, through my, mind. Through, my body. through my body, through my affairs. Through my affairs. I think it. I think it. I believe it. I believe it. I accept it. I accept it. I rejoice it. in it. I rejoice in it. It is good and very good. It is good and very good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. So it is. Sing the peace song.